Welcome back to the Scorecast, and it's, it's Tim and Jacko. We are on the, I think they call these a Chesterfield. Uh, whatever it is, I'm lounging. I have, there is, I have had a photo taken on one of these before, Tim. <laughs> But that Should, it's, would you want this to, isn't the visual now. What no, to it's, to find it no, it's absolutely find fine. It. We'll move swiftly on, otherwise we'll get into <laughs> all sorts of problems like we did in the last one, where I oh, was oversharing. Possibly my favourite podcast Q and A moment today. Yeah, um, we are lounging because we've actually worked quite hard today. We've done quite yeah. a lot of filming content, so I'm feeling yes. quite relaxed. I'm so excited I'm to get about some, some of the tutorials that are going to come out for the peoples. Yeah. Um, Helping them with a lot of it, problem solving. Mm. So I have adopted the, the, the pose of if somebody was to be on a chat show. Yeah. Question master. I, I thought I wanted you to kick off. Oh, I will. You had your, you had, you had a nice one. Adopt it, the question. Sorry. Swing pose there. Well, actually, well, actually, some people are just listening; they can't see. But for those that can't see, I'm lounging. Uh, this is a really interesting question. Um, we're going to cover off a little bit on lower body to start off with. Yeah. Uh, so a question that came from David Farrant. Um, he's currently travelling around the world. He starts off. Hi, Jacko and Tim. And that's in order of who's mostly likely to be doing a flag at that particular moment. So he oh, he's gone more likely. Yeah, rather than he's gone off. Ooh, that must have messed up the algorithm slightly well, with not saying Tim and Jacket yet. Love the podcasts. Oh, he's in. You're in. <laughs> Books and videos. Currently on a six month holiday around the world. Of the, uh, working through the back catalogue of the, of the podcast is keeping entertained. So he says we've mentioned before about in our core videos about tight lower body restricting the ability to perform certain exercises properly. Um, and therefore, was wondering if we had a collection of favourite lower body mobility mm. exercises that would improve uh, flexibility. Uh, hips are tighter than a nun's nasty. I don't know what that means. What does it mean? I think it's that it's, it's on the tighter side of tight right. rather than loose. Let's, not, let's leave it there. Um, generally, has I've never a, heard that phrase. I to be honest, it was the first for me. Uh, generally, um, when he's not on holiday, has a office job and doing the same stretches doesn't, or just sort of like yeah. st static stretches doesn't seem to be doing. Uh, the job form and it's pretty boring. Yeah. So, from I somebody who actually knows a fair bit about mm. having a tight lower body, yes. David Jackson. I am a working, uh, a, a working progress. Is that the a right work word? In progress. A work in progress. There we go. On and feeling the benefits massively of loosening off hips, particularly hip flexors. The effect of that has then on hamstring length and then that that whole lower body hip mobility and then. What the days when I just spend a bit more time on that, and I've done, haven't been to yoga for quite a while, to mm. be fair, for various different life reasons. Um, but yeah, my, my own little bit of work, along with some yoga, how everything that's stacked up on top of that, like core-wise, but then particularly shoulders, um, benefiting from that massively. Probably one big thing that we all do a lot of, I do it, it sounds like he's doing his office job, is sitting and the, the, the hip flexors getting tight just in that position. And I think if you go into, particularly when you go into like L-sit type stuff as well, when you go in that shortened position and you realize that not only are your hip flexors tight, they're actually weak as a, a, nan, a nun's yeah. whatever he said. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> so um, one of the first things I would suggest if he's spending a lot of time sitting is getting into those hip flexors. And it's the same process that we go through um, with the upper body stuff. We look at like mm -hmm. some self massage followed by then some release work, whether that's actually statically or whether it needs to be a bit more um, moving through range in a bit of more mobility style, but particularly for um, hip flexors, getting some of the um, uh, contract relax tile yeah, stuff yeah. so getting the butt on starting to feel the relationship between when you squeeze your butt on and you push your hip through whatever type of hip flexion uh, or hip extension to stretch your hip flexion you get into start to feel that relationship between when you fire your glutes up how that then pushes the hip through how you then feel cracky the intensity of this stretch has come on relax and, and start to let that go through that's almost like a static stretch but you're actually working in yeah, and out active. with some it's like yeah, yeah there's some yeah, activeness yeah. to it yeah yeah I think the lower body mobility question is a really interesting one and in calisthenics it rears its head in a number of different ways because mm. when you're doing like for you for example when you're doing some of your plunge progressions yeah. like you actually walking around you wouldn't know you've got particularly tight yeah, yeah. you do pretty well but as soon as you take your feet off the ground and you're trying to stabilise elsewhere yeah. super tight, yeah. super restricted and you can see it straight away and the system is just then kind of compromising yeah. somewhere else. So if you broadly kind of categorise your mobility work, you've got static, active, and then what we would call dynamic based movement. Um, and I, I'm still to be convinced that there is a, a single solution which mm. is gonna work. If you go and read some of the research around stretching, 
some people would say that static stretching um, interventions have got absolutely no benefit whatsoever. However, if you look at that from an applied perspective, you look at gymnasts, they do tons of static stretching yeah. and they are some of the most mobile athletes that you're going to find. Um, if you go to a bit more of a movement based um, approach and you're starting to do like we did a strength and play workshop recently and we covered quite a lot of lower body mobility exercise that moving in and out of range deep squat positions finding different crawling patterns and challenging hip mobility in those active positions that tends to kind of help to loosen things up the big thing to kind of pin this back to though is like rather than going what is tight the hamstring's mm. tight if you're trying to make some intervention towards it and it's not improving then it's not just a chronic tightness issue in the hamstring yeah. there is another reason why that's tight so the rest of the chain somewhere the body's got a reason to create that hamstring tightness yeah. if it's not improving with some consistent work and that's the one thing is like people that are mobile commit time to yeah. mobility yeah. that's why people that do yoga move so well because they do a lot of yoga yeah um whereas a lot of the stuff that we're doing in our history like sitting and calisthenics and when we played rugby it's all actually promoting an environment of tightness. So that would be my one take home is, is probably think about a consistent commitment. But you make a really good point, David, about static stretching being pretty boring in that if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I hate sitting on the floor yeah. in a stretch position for five minutes. It's, I'm the same, it's boring. However, getting in the gym and starting to move around in some different kind of more dynamic type mobility exercises, yeah. I quite enjoy. And I feel like my legs are getting a bit of a workout at the same time. So there's a few different ideas in there, like why is it tight? But then also like adding in that strength in range and that's what the dynamic yeah, side yeah. of things give you. Rather than just sitting at end range in a slack shape, moving in and out of these shapes actually starts to develop a little bit of strength and proprioception at end range. So, and, and, and combined with what the research is saying, there isn't a magic, magic bullet, but what I do think is important to start off with is find something that you like, that it gives you some level of enjoyment and fits into what your lifestyle is like, and something that you can consistently do, um, and then do that for a period of time and take stock. Yeah, and I'd identify, some of, one of the things that I liked, um, the podcast with the Yuri Marmestein, was he, he was doing it in front of us, but he talked about like, if you want to do something about your flexibility and mobility, like yes, have some standalone sessions where you do it, but just he, his, his encouragement, and I really took on board as a great point, was get moving more often throughout your day. Mm. So if you have got a desk job, and you can end up, we're probably gonna do this Q&A now, and we're gonna sit down for about 40 minutes. And what we should really be doing is getting up and out of that position yeah. and start rather than just being stuck in one shape. So identify times when you spend a long time in one position or identify other like um, repetitive movement patterns that you do yeah. that just get you good in one position or one flow um, where you're actually going to then get tight trying to get out of the opposite yeah. of that. So, you know, the fact that being sitting with your knee bent in your, in your hip flex then trying to get in, the straightening those things out, like um, for some of your progressions, like you talked about, like my straddle and my hamstring length and adductor length in that mm. straddle position affects my um, my planche progress, as well as the fact that I'm just not strong enough for my planche thing yeah. as well. But like trying to the strength, I always think the strength is hard to do. It takes time to build up um, the flexibility, the mobility side of things as well. It's difficult and does take time, but it's a bit of a it's a bit of an easier win in terms of like energy levels, I yeah, yeah. sort of see it as it's not as brutal to yeah. I think um, the two go hand improve. in hand, that's the way to look at it. You've got to start to get range of movement, but you've got to gain strength through that range if the body yeah. is going to keep that and have the confidence to move through yeah. that range. Otherwise it won't, it'll just default back to what it knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, are, you, we might be asking people sometimes sort of say, why haven't we got any sort of lower body type work? And it's for the reason that it's actually quite complex for us to, to unpick. Um, and the end result of that would be to be able to do a shrimp squat or a pistol squat or some other variation. There isn't as much in calisthenics alone for lower body which is going to keep you engaged for that long. Those movements are good, um, but we, we, we are going to be doing some more lower body work yeah. and we will be putting some mobility stuff out. We've got a big project coming on later this year where we're hopefully going to have, or well, we will have lots more prescriptive advice around mobility for the lower body, corrective patterns. Um, the lower body can be a bit of a open for Pandora's box if we start to kind of um, just go a little bit sort of like here are five things which are great because it's yeah. very individualized. Um, but yeah, definitely an area we're going to do more on. But I think rather than saying these are the best things, you've got to go and find something that works for you. Resources, have a look at Mobility Ward with Kelly Starrett. There's yeah. some great stuff in there. 
Um, and then also start to look around people that do ground-based movement for some more dynamic mobility exercises. Go and see what gymnasts are suggesting for static-based movements um, and, and start to have a look at what are those going to work for you. And I, to be honest, for me, I'm hypermobile, so I have actually I'm, I have the gift of not needing to worry too much about it. But my general approach would be to use all of those things. Yeah. I've, I, so I would yeah. do some of Kelly Starrett stuff, I do some stuff that I've learned from a gymnastics coach, and I do some stuff which I've seen from people like ground-based movement practitioners and that for me feels like the combination works but that is all done with some self myofascial release like using yeah. a, a massage ball and the hip flexors to, to start to take some of that neural tightness out first and then start to work through some range. Yeah, yeah. And just build that into your everyday life and habits I think is a nice one to... So in summary, clear as mud. <laughs> clear as but that reflects what the research says. Like literally, go and, if you read the scientific journals, we actually don't, interestingly, if you read the journals, we don't actually know what we're stretching. We think we're like clever as humans, we've got this exercise, physiology stuff sorted out. People don't know if it's neural tissue, if it's muscular tissue, if it's joint capsule, if it's fascial tissue. We yeah. still have got no idea, really, what is, a, um, what is actually changing for range of movement to improve. Yeah. And that's why I've got all these different options and different forms of massage and X, Y, and Z. Um, so I think the best thing we can do at the moment is use a selection. Yeah, and I think that we will definitely make some content around some of this. That, like, it would be a nice bit. If we get more and more questions about it, so um, we could try and describe where you might get into now. But it's, we're going to be much better um, putting together some lower body mobility yeah. stuff, lower body strength stuff, and we'll build uh, that into some tutorials as well as some of the members uh, stuff once the member oh, site is live. That was a big secret. Oh, sorry, no, was not that. supposed to say. Okay. But there is going to be that coming later in the year, so there's going to be a heap load of stuff on that, as well as we'll, we'll, we'll crack some stuff on for YouTube as well to show you some of those examples. David, I hope that's helped. I don't know if you're still on holiday, but I hope yeah. if you are, I'll enjoy it. I wonder if you're still listening. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so we also have a second, a second question is actually like we've got, it's coming a few times, a few on email asking about circuit training, which a lot of the time has been based around some of the lower body stuff we do and also like the amount of cardio work we do. Um, specifically, Ryan, our friends over at Simply Guys Fitness on Instagram, um, says he doesn't think he's heard um, us talk much about cardio or Metcom work and wants to know what our thoughts are on this type of work. He's heard us mention things like bike rides and sprinting and, and, and jogging, um, but never explicitly into factors about training, um, our training ethos and mentality around cardio and Metcong. Um, not a snappy question, I admit. Thanks, Chris and Ryan. <laughs> uh, great question. Um, I, where to start on this one? My thoughts on cardio or metabolic conditioning work. Um, yeah. Good, do it. Do so. Um, when we're talking about what specifically, I think my, he's asked a good, it, because he said, he's talked about like, what are our ethos and mentality around it. So my like ethos around cardio work now that I do compared to say when I played rugby and what I might say to somebody if they, if they want to, it's going to depend on what their goal is. Like if they want, if it's like they want to run a marathon or they want to do their first 5k or they just want a conditioning session yeah. to go alongside their, their calisthenics work, what I'm going to tell them to do or advise, what I would advise them to do would be different depending on what all those different things are. Yeah. And when it comes back to my own ethos now, is now we well, used to do lots of high intensity stuff because that was what was beneficial for mm. for fitness for rugby whereas now with my with my cardio work is more um it's a little bit more social although it gets very competitive very quickly <laughs> as soon as we walk out the door but it might be a run with my wife or it might be a part 5k park run or it might be going out on the bikes and doing 10 miles or it could be 40 miles and it can be uh, uh, trying to go up some we found some stupid climb that we're going to try and do or it might just be nice and leisurely it d depends on how i'm feeling because for me that side of cardio that side of training isn't about i don't do it for because i'm trying to get my body fat down or i'm trying to get my fitness up it's i do it because i enjoy it and so I do things that i enjoy and it's a bit of a it doesn't feel like a training session because i approach it like that but i know that it's good for my body it's good for my cardiovascular yeah, yeah. health calisthenics has got a role to play or you can use calisthenics as part of a circuit or conditioning based workout it's just a matter of putting things together to then yeah. actually create the opportunity to get tired which is what you're looking to do i think one of the difficult things with conditioning within calisthenics is you've got to pick the easiest stuff because 
throwing hard movements like pull-ups and, and potentially mm. like some of the other progressions we might play around with into a conditioning workout, you're going to lose quality. And every time you move, because you get tired, that's a, that's just a fact that that's going to happen as a session progresses. Um, every time you start to give yourself permission to move with poor quality, you're teaching or reinforcing faulty movement patterns, which are then not going to help with the long-term gains. So my, my thoughts around cardio within calisthenics is yes, great, and use body weight movements to do that. And all you've got to do is pick them and movements and put them next to each other in a workout yeah. and short rest periods, reps and stuff you can play around with. Um, but make sure that that's still happening with your, within line with your ability to move yeah. well. So my recommendation would that be if you might start with pull-ups, but you're using drop sets as you go through a circuit yeah. so that you're actually, you're stopping the movement when you get to a stage where you are starting to compromise the movement quality or you're starting to do some clusters where it might be it's a set of 10 pull-ups mixed with a load of exercises but you can't balance 10 out on set number four so actually it becomes five sets of two for example yeah. um, so you've then got that compromise of going well that's actually now i'm not going to get that tired but you've got to question what you want off the back of it if you want to just go down a purely fatigue route then I think you benefit as of mixing in that as just a more standardized high intensity or hit training session, if that's what you want to call it, where you're using prowlers or lunges or you're using push ups or body weight rows, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. People with there was a whole surge a while ago, a few years back now, where people were like, Oh, insanity, have you seen insanity or P90X and what do you think about those? I'm like, what well, I think about them, it's just loads of hard stuff and there's no rest period. So the result of that is you get tired. Yeah. Like it's not rocket science, it's just lots of difficult things. Um, so I haven't really got any prescription on it. Like if someone was saying to me, right, as a metabolic session, I have no worries, I'm just gonna put a load of exercises yeah. together, but I'm not gonna put, put in stuff which is particularly gonna be massively, um, require a huge amount of movement precision. Yeah. Because I don't want that. I don't yeah. want to mix those two things together. And sometimes the easiest way to, to get a metabolic um, adaptation is doing stuff which is not calisthenics. Like throw some stuff in, but like running is great for it. Yeah. Sledge pushes if you're really working in a gym. Um, you look at CrossFit and some of the stuff that they do around metabolic conditioning, burpees, bar, like jump over and bars, all that sort of stuff, box jumps. You can use all of that sort of stuff. Um, it's just understanding what your outcome is and how you're going to structure the session to ultimately get tired. And, and yeah. Whether that's endurance-based work of 30 minutes non-stop or if it's short bursts of, of like 10 second work, whatever it is. Personally for me, I prefer to spend the time that I'm in the gym doing stuff which is moving towards my calisthenics goals. Yeah. I can go for a run and do my conditioning work outside of those sessions. So my, because of where, where life is at, at the moment, my um, my time that I get to actually be in a place where I can train calisthenics um, is, is, a, is, is quite high value to me. So I maximize that opportunity. If I was going into the gym and doing a metabolic session, I'm, that's for me is just a lower down a priority rank. But yeah. I think it's one of the great things or walk or whatever. Yeah, about, about sorry, cardio is that like, it's, it is a great opportunity to not do it in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And to get outside if, you know, if you but live if you in a hot country, country or it's a nice, yeah. 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 You enjoy it, doing rows and, and that sort of stuff. Like we're going to go to Mike's gym in Marbella in yeah. September. That's the sort of stuff that I'll enjoy because actually, like it's a metabolic session, it's an obstacle course racing type facility, yeah. but it's going to challenge me. Um, it'll, be, a yeah. it'll be, yeah, it'll be knackery, outdoors. but it'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> whereas going for a 10K run for me is like, to get fairly bored fairly yeah. quickly. Whereas some people actually love running. So it's like, what do you want and what do you like? So if you want a cardio session, like you've got to understand that then it, you can't use strength parameters yeah, and yeah. you're not going to get stronger from it, but you're going to get a cardiovascular response. And, and it's in, in terms of adherence to it, it's got to be stuff that you like. So choose things that, choose things that you like to do. Mm. Like I say, put them together. Um, and that might be in the gym or it might be outside. It, it doesn't necessarily, matters understanding what it is that you want out of it rather than doing it because your mate's doing it or doing it because you've seen other people on instagram doing it what what do you actually want and then build your training around that yeah and it doesn't have to be complicated yeah like i've done sessions before a cardio session i was on i remember one that i, I was doing more cardio work when i was on uh, we had a tra training camp in thailand at the start of 2016 before the games and there's a set there's a stadium by the swimming pool that we were training at and we would just be doing like broad jumps up the steps i'd get to the top it'd be 10 body weight rows sort of push-ups some skipping and i'll be back down and that was like that was it it's just skipping. It was whatever i could do which was going to elevate my heart rate skipping's a great one you don't like it though. i've skipped before we've talked about skipping before you're not a massive fan because you'd say it's like stationary you'd rather go for a run than skip uh, probably yeah or a running skip 
That would be cool. Like a playground. We bring that back. That could, yeah, yeah. Like or just running around town, like Skiffy. That'd be cool. Uh, so that is again a fairly ambiguous question, but it's just there's so much stuff you can do, and that's the, that's yeah. the art and design side of that. And, it would uh, be wrong of us to say you must do uh, high intensity stuff, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and you must do yeah. X number of reps and sets and this much rest period because that's just one thing that you could yeah, yeah. do. And, and like it goes back to your point about like do what's, what you like. If you said to me, Tim, we're going to do a sprint session outside, I'd be like, yeah, great. Or I'm going to come in the gym and I'm going to do some form of like got some boxing in there or it's got some hammer hits, like sledgehammers, yeah. that sort of stuff, high, high uh, intensity work, short bursts, that's me all over. If you yeah. say I want to go for a 10K run, do you want to come? I'm like, Probably not. <laughs> Boring. Yeah. For me, personally. Yeah, yeah. I don't really like it that much. Um, so again, yeah, I think that's probably, I'm sorry if that is ambiguous, but it, it, it's, I hope there's some stuff in there that just enough, goes, you know, yeah. gives you the freedom to actually do what you probably know you want to do. Yeah, make some decisions. And, and our general ethos is, yes, have cardio and conditioning condition working your program. It is important and just prioritize it in line with whatever issue you're working on. But for general health, yes, we need to be stressing the heart um, and the cardiorespiratory system to, to, to create fitness in that component and not just yeah. Looking big. And if you're just starting out, like start easy. Yeah. <laughs> start easy and just build it up. That's that's that is definitely the way to yeah. way to go. So the final question uh, from Instagram, Reese the Jack. Uh, I think he's like the Jack Jack. Jack. He says, hey, lads, here's my weekly question. <laughs> yeah, he asks a lot of questions. Loads, Reece, I love um, so thank you for asking questions, Gage. If we didn't have any questions, we'd have no Q and A. It would be just an A. Just an A. Just was rambling on. Um, oh no, that's what it is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard in the past, don't skip leg day. And you lads look like you skip up. No, he hasn't said that. <laughs> that is one of the phrases of the fitness industry. I just we could do away with that entirely. No, skip leg day. But he said, don't skip leg day. The reason he's talking, asking about it is it being, he's heard about it being in large muscle groups and large muscle groups, when you train them effectively or how you train them, this is going to vary, um, producing um, a, a better hormonal response that can have a positive effect on the rest of your adaptation for your body. And is there any truth in that? And therefore, if he wants to make his handstands better, should he train legs? Um, but he's, <laughs> he says he doesn't have, he doesn't really have any time for a leg day. So it sounds like Reese does a little bit <laughs> skipping leg day himself. Uh, but hopefully Tim's answer is not going to scare you too yeah. much. Uh, so first up the caveat is I haven't looked at the research around the subject area for some time, which is probably a few years. Um, the, going back to where the question probably stems from, there was a, a, a thought process and, and, and a belief that if we were doing compound large multi-muscle group, uh, multi-joint movements at the beginning of a session like heavy squats Squat, or deadlift. deadlifts or something, that that could um, spike our anabolic hormones. Um, testosterone, growth hormone, blah, 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 and start to give us, uh, have a potential benefit on the rest of the session that we're gonna do. The last research conversation I had with somebody about this was a guy called Stu Phillips, and, and actually the research that they'd done was said that the, the response from doing heavy work like squats wasn't actually big enough or sustained enough to actually make any difference on it. Um, I, but as I said, I don't know if that is the, the most current thought process on that. My general short form answer would be, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, you could if you wanted to, but what I do know is um, that it improves upper body strength and handstands, is training upper body strength and handstands. Yeah. Um, and if you want to put some lower body stuff in there, it's definitely benefit of having a total body type session if, you're, if your weekly program can, can entertain that. So having some leg work in there and then doing some upper body stuff will be of benefit because you get to hit those muscle groups more regularly. Dialing down to the testosterone or the, the, the hormonal response is not something that even I, as a strength and conditioning coach working with athletes, I'm particularly worried about no. because there's always so much other stuff which makes a big difference. Yeah. That would be something which I'm kind of thinking about extra one, two percent potentially with some individuals. But and, and with those, you'd be talking like high intensity, low um, low reps, very high yeah. loads for you, you, you know, if I've back in the day deadlifted 200 kilos once. If I went in the gym now and did a load of like 100 kilo deadlifts, it's just not gonna be, mm. it's not gonna be, if there is, if I can get some sort of hormonal response that we're debating how big it is, it's definitely not gonna be stimulated by, unless I go in the red zone and absolutely yeah, go yeah. chops in, my deadlift would improve and maybe my handstand might improve my, my pushing strength, but 
like you say, what's going to definitely mm. improve my handstand pushing strength and, and other aspects of my upper body is me training those effectively. Yeah. That's the most important thing. I sometimes think if I look at like sprinters, like 100 meter sprinters, there is obviously some benefit of doing high intensity work like that because you look at the majority of good sprinters and they carry a decent, well built solid physique. Mm. And that can't just be down to the genetics of people that happen to be a sprinter. Yeah. Um, so I think there is something there. I'm going to hold my hands up and say it's not something that I've looked into. Um, but my focus would be just, yes, include it if it fits in, but don't let that be a deciding factor. I've got to do legs otherwise I'm not going to get adaptation from my handstand, especially when you're talking skill. Yeah. Um, there will be very little benefit of any sort of like hormonal response on, on skill adaptation. Um, really, the only response is going to be, if there is one, on muscle mass um, and potentially strength. But again, you've got, there's, there's probably a number of other things which you could do to optimize your training program before you um, before you start worrying about yeah. that. I think Reese is living in the real world like us has got it sounded like he's struggling for time anyway he trains three times a week at the moment he said um, so try and put another one in was unrealistic and if you got if you are restricted for time like everyone that isn't a professional athlete then you need to be prioritizing the things that you want want to work on you enjoy doing and like doing there then you're going to make the most uh, most progress focusing on them Fantastic. Yeah. Happy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think I, I've probably got some more I could talk about, about like, skipping leg day, but um, yeah. I don't think I need to. Yeah, cool. Well, I think and so, some of the other cardio stuff we talked about earlier when we were talking about running, cycling, and what you was box yeah, jumps, so all yeah. those other things, like that's training, that's, that's legs, that's training, that's training legs, and it's training in a way that um, is probably going to give us longevity long term rather yeah. than trying to make get my you know there's certain things that people train for that need a heavy squat a heavy yeah, deadlift yeah. dependent on your sport but if you want to be like fit and healthy when you're 60 70 um then squatting heavy with a big mm. weight on your back crushing your spine might not be the most beneficial yeah. thing to do so i get maybe if i get three or four sessions a week just an example of what i'm doing lower body wise at the moment it would be a set of pistol squats and then i would go uh, weight vest like we've got a track in, at, at the gym, so I'll be doing like fours and backwards lunges into a set of bodyweight squats, and I might do that three or four times. Yeah. And that'll be pretty much what I do. And the reason for that being, I like the endurance side of that. It gets the heart going, goes back to the conversation about, sort of, it gives me some form of metabolic um, adaptation, but also my life is gonna be at a point where I'm gonna go for a run, or yeah. I wanna go and climb a mountain with, with Jack when he's a bit older. And, I, and it's that sort of, I actually have got no interest in whether I can deadlift 200 kilos or 180 for one rep because it just doesn't excite me that much yeah. anymore. It's the function that I'm more interested in, but my decision to do a leg day on a Friday has got absolutely nothing to do with the hormonal response I'm expecting to get as a result of anything else in the week. Yeah. Because also, just one last thing, yeah. like we do a lot of work on body, like pull-ups use a significant amount of muscle. Like so, and, and also yeah. like from a dipping perspective, if you're using those big up body compound movements, if there is something from a hormonal perspective, probably going to elicit some of that from just doing like weighted pull-ups. Particularly the size of your shoulders. Possibly. <laughs> Large muscle groups. Yeah. I got that adaptation in my turtle shell, I think. Yeah, yeah they just ate a turtle. <laughs> um, so I think that probably brings us to the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there's some gems in there that people yeah. can decide for themselves. I feel like we've skirted around and, and varied, but that's sometimes the way in, in, in exercise science and training that you don't always so yeah. know that there isn't always a definitive well, there's, more often than not there is not a definitive answer yeah. than, the, than the, when there is one yeah the sort of it depends answer yeah but then hopefully we've, hopefully we've given you enough context around that so you can start to piece mm -hmm. it together for yourself and you understand that us saying no you have to do it like this um, for a lot of these answers would be wrong of us to do that it would just be one option of many things yeah. that you could do and i might go and have a look at some research later on today to find out where we are with hormones so i've got a bit of homework for you Reece, so i appreciate that a bit more reading to do for me Perfect. So, if you've got any questions, yep. comments send them in. below or email, Instagram. wherever you're seeing it, for Instagram, Facebook, comments, um, DMs, anything, uh, and ask your questions about anything that you're working on, anything you need help on. If there's some massive themes that people are coming through, we'll do like the lower body mobility. It sounds like we need to do a tutorial yep. for YouTube on that. If there's any other big things that come up, we'll start to then that can drive uh, the content that we make for you rather than it just being me and Tim going, oh, I want to do a video on this today. <laughs> we can service you better and more if you uh, let us know what you want uh, what you want help with well said david until next time class dismissed <laughs>